So Go High Level just released a set of new features on their conversation AI feature, which allows you to now conversationally book appointments with leads. So if your AI bot asks the lead if they want to book an appointment and they agree to a time, all of that can be completed completely inside of chat. So that's one new action. The second action is we can now trigger workflows when specific conditions are met. So let's just say you're asking your lead what their budget is for a project. If they say they have a $500 budget, we can trigger a specific workflow on that specific answer. And if they say they have a $1,000 budget, we can trigger a specific workflow on that unique uh, answer. And then we also have an add contact info. So let's just say on that same question, when somebody tells us what their budget is, we can now update that custom contact field related to the contact of their budget. So we can see what their budget is without going through the whole conversation. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how to set this up and how to use this feature, as well as another new feature that kind of came out and probably went under the radar for most people related to conversation AI. So let's get started. So first thing here is go into your Go High Level account and go to settings, and then we're gonna go to conversation AI. And then here we have our bot name. So I work with real estate investors and wholesalers. And so we use this AI system to qualify motivated seller leads. And so I just have mine there. You can do this obviously for any type of business though. Then for our bot status, we're just gonna have it turned on to autopilot. So this means it's gonna reply automatically. And then we have our supported channel. So I'm gonna just use text message for this, but you can see all of the other channels supported. Then we just have the business name, the wait time before responding, and the maximum messages a bot can send. And so I just have everything, you know, this is as fast as a response as possible. And then I have the maximum number of messages so that the leads can talk to the bot as long as it needs to book an appointment. So then you can do optional training. So you can put in different URLs to your website or other websites to get information that the bot will need. I haven't messed around too much with that. I've just found to do a simple Google Doc um, or you know question and answer works really well here. But now to the new feature, I just wanted to show you that in case you're new to the feature entirely, you know how to get set up. But here is where we basically can access these new features. So we have our bot goals and then we have our prompt. And so our personality here, I just call all of my AI Jackie. And so you can just see that the personality here is just you are Jackie. Then we have our intent and then we have our additional information. And this is really where these features actually come to life. So if you don't have the proper questions, you can't expect the AI to actually trigger these specific actions that we, we may want to create here. So for example, like I said, I work with investors and so we qualify homeowners that need to sell their property, right? And so you can just see a few sample questions here like com confirming the complete address of the property, right? So if our bot is talking to motivated sellers and we can't get the address, we, we collect the address prior to them entering the system because we use Facebook ads. But just as an example, we want to, I want to demonstrate here how the motivated seller could basically tell the bot the address of the property and then we can then update that inside of the contacts custom field. And then we also have why are they planning to sell, right? So maybe they're going through a divorce or something like that. So once the bot asks that question, we want to map that into a custom field as well. Then we have the asking price. So, you know, how much do they want for the property that can be mapped into the field and then condition and then making sure it's booking an appointment. So the current limitation right now for the uh, amount of custom fields you can collect is just three. So I chose the reason for selling, the asking price, and then the address. And so in order to actually get this set up first, you need to go to the custom fields and make sure you have the corresponding custom fields created so that when the bot asks the questions you need answers to and you want them to then update information to, that everything can go to the correct custom field. Now, just a little technicality here on the field. I use the multi-line text put input. You could probably use single line, but um, for formatting issues, you want to make sure that um, you're using a field that the bot can basically, um, you know, map to. There are advanced ways you can use like uh, drop down or something like that, but that would require creating like a, another automation that formats it and stuff like that. So let's show you now how this actually works and what, what it's supposed to do. So once I message the system, which I'm going to do from my other account here, because 
I can show you the test right here and how the bot works, but you're not going to see the like fields update and the appointment get booked and all that cool stuff or even how to trigger a workflow. So I want to show you how this works. So let's message this. So I'm just going to say hello. And before I do that, I want to show you this uh, thing that, you know, you may not be aware of related to this feature. Okay. Cause they kind of go hand in hand. So here is the bot that I just showed you and that I just created. Now you'll see that when you're back in conversation AI, we can create another bot, right? I can create a bot and I can save it. And then I can create another bot and save that one. And so I could basically create all these different bots, right? But the problem was, well, there's only one primary bot. And so what would happen is that if I messaged, you know, this number, which is related to this sub account, if I messaged this number, then it's just gonna default to the sales um, bot, right? Which is not necessarily the bot that I want in this demo, right? And so how do we actually fix this without making this the primary bot? Or additionally, how can we have multiple bots and have the correct bot respond to the actual contact based on the stage they are in our business? So an example would be sales and then support. So if somebody has not booked an appointment or maybe they just filled out a form, they need to be connected with the sales bot that tries to get them to book an appointment and qualify them, right? If somebody has made a purchase and they are a customer, well, maybe we need them connected to our support bot so they can, if they have questions about logging in or whatever you're selling, that the support bot actually answers, right, the, the question. And so a simple way to do this, and I'm not going to do an entire training on it because it's... It can be its own whole video, but just to show you where this action is and what you can do with it is let's just keep it super simple and say that when someone fills out a lead form, they are, they should go to our sales bot. So we'll just keep it super simple. So we're going to just put a trigger here, Facebook lead form submitted. Then what you can do is you can now go in and type status and you can just click on this right here when it loads and we can do our uh, changed change assigned conversation AI bot to sales. And so now what this does is let's just say the support bot is the default bot just for the sake of the example. Now when someone submits this lead form, they are now assigned to the prompt and to the, um, the sales bot. And so it's gonna try to get them to book an appointment, right? And alternatively, let's just say that every time you get a customer, they fill out just a specific form in your system. This is all just for the sake of examples. And I'll just call it this contact us form, right? And so let's say when someone becomes a customer, they have to fill out this unique form. Now what we can do is we can actually change this to our support bot right here. So then if any conversation um, is initiated, right, by the actual user and they have been in this, uh, they have filled out this form, then the support bot will respond, okay? So I think that's super important because not many people know that that even exists. And so what we've been playing around with is those two elements of business, right? Just prior to being a customer and after being a customer. Yes, you could potentially uh, create this for a lot of different use cases. I won't get into like how you would do that, but you could technically like segment all these different aspects of your business and have kind of an expert bot for those stages. Now that could go over the top. So we're just sticking with sales and support, but I wanted to show you guys that because that feature is pretty much connected to, you know, this because I could have different bots or different products even. Um, and you may find that it performs better when you just have one specific bot, um, that knows about kind of one thing, right? So, uh, hopefully that alone was valuable for you guys to see how you can play around with automating other aspects of your business. Okay. So now that I've just changed this one to primary, I'm going to test this out. And what we're looking for is the following. We want it to ideally book the appointment, which it already could do. Um, but then we want to see it update this reason for selling from me, the asking price, and then my address, and it should update it in this custom field. So now I'm going to send over this message. And there it says, thanks, new breed investor, because that's from this uh, business account here. But we should get a response here in just a second. And then we will see if all of those necessary fields update. So it looks like I have my other bot on. So let me turn that one off. All right. So that one is turned off. And so now it's going to say, can you please confirm the address or the complete address of the property? So I'm going to just say uh, 123 ABC Street, Los Angeles, California. 90210. And so what we should see 
is inside of this contact here, we should see the address field update, which will be right here in the additional info. Okay, so right here is where this should update. So I mapped it to its own custom field just because I wanted to make sure it was working. And so it says, thank you for confirming the address. Why are you planning? Okay, so when I refresh this, this should now have this, uh, this uh, piece of information there. And so let's verify that before we move on. So perfect. So now we've collected the address from the contact, all right? And then now it's asking, why am I planning on selling? And then I'll just say divorce. And then it will move into the next question. And I believe based on memory, I had it uh, map the reason for selling. And then I think asking price. And I just left the condition blank because there's only three uh, fields that you can map right now. I'm sorry to hear that. What is your asking price? So I'll just say 550K. And then once I verify that this is completed, I'll show you some other kind of ninja stuff you could do to make this even better. But let's refresh that and see if it came through. So right there, perfect. So those are all three of the questions that we mapped. So the rest of it is just kind of going through the rest of the prompt. I'm sure they will add in the ability to add, you know, more than five or 10 custom fields. And so then any conversation actually becomes extremely powerful because one, uh, we can summarize now the conversations uh, between the AI and the user through being able to identify what the question was that was asked and then the answer. And we can now summarize that, put that into our notes and other stuff. There's a lot of things you could do, but I'll just finish this off here and just say decent. And then what it should do is move into the appointment booking. And then, like I said, I'll kind of show you that other ninja stuff you can do um, and what you can think about for using this for your business. So let's see uh, what the next question is. It should be related to the appointment. So I'm just going to say yes. And so now you can see though, we have this address, asking price, divorce. Once they add in, you know, five to 10 of these, you can just, you know, do, you can automate a lot of things that potentially go on in conversation. And so when would I like the appointment? I'll just say tomorrow. And then should just give us a list of uh, times for tomorrow and then I'll just confirm it and then that will be it. All right, so I'll just do 8 a.m. And then now what it will do is it will now book me into this calendar here. So once it registers that, there it is, boom, appointment booked. And then once we refresh this, we will see that appointment in there. So boom, there it is. So now you guys can see how to update uh, custom fields with the bot. And now let me just kind of show you some other, you know, ninja things you can do with it. So if you'll remember here in the conversation AI, these custom fields are um, being updated, right? Based on specific responses. And so one of those being, why are they selling, right? And so remember, you can do this with any niche, any business. It is limited to those three fields right now, but once they add that, you can do this for pretty much any stage of a customer journey as well as for any business. But what we can do here, right? One of the things I noticed is people don't always type, right? In the correct format that you want to save the, the data, or how should I say this? People don't always type in the correct format that you wanna save their data in. So for example, with the address, I typed in 123 ABC Street, it's all lowercase, it's all formatted. And so you may wanna actually map that into like one, two, three, four fields, right? You may want to map this into the street address. You want to map this into the city, state, zip code, right? So what you can do is when there is a uh, custom or a contact field is changed, which they change because we told the bot to change the field when it gets a certain answer, we can go here to the address one because that's the one that I mapped it to. And we can just say has changed, right? And so... That means that the bot, you'd have to make sure this doesn't conflict with other workflows, but assuming this was the only workflow you had, when that specific field changes, right, then what we can do is we can use this internal GPT and we can say, please format this data into the following separate fields. So we would put the data, which would be the, uh, the in this case, it would be the address field being what uh, was now changed. So we're taking the 
one two three ABC Street, this lowercase formatted, you know, written text, it now triggers this contact to you know to start the workflow, and then we're now telling GPT, hey, please format like this. Essentially, what what is here, if you're not new or if you're newer to this type of stuff, essentially what is here is this, right? But the reason it's not actually that is because we want to do this dynamically for every time this happens. So this is just a custom field. And so what's underneath it though is the one, two, three ABC street, right? And then we would then categorize each of those fields. So street address and then example would be like one, two, three ABC street. And then we would do a uh, city do Los Angeles, right? And you would basically go through and do city, uh, state, and zip code. So CA is now California, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then once you have this, right, you can map these outputs into the uh, correct field, right? So if you just wanted to, I would suggest doing it one at a time. So you would have four actions here. So the first one would be the street address. So we would call this format street address. So boom, there's the first thing we do. Then we would update the uh, street address, right? Street address based on the output of this, right? Boom, so we would save that. And then we would duplicate this, we would copy, uh, copy action, and then we would do this, please format, and then we would do the city, right? Please format this data, and then we would do city, and we would do uh, California and we could do examples like CA equals California you could do tech you could have chat GBT uh, it, it should be able to pull this just off of this right it, please extract the city from this message but if you're having an error you could put some examples in there CA is California TX is Texas etc right and then you would just save that one and then do the same thing so you could do update contact field and then now the city would be this new output from GPT-2, right? And you could do that, right, in just this one example, but you could also do this um, based on other answers you're collecting as well. So budget, maybe they type in um, 500,000, right? And they just type with no commas, no dollar sign, none, none of that. You can pass it through this action to correct it, and then you can update your contact field. So if you have, like I said, uh, instead of a free text, um, you know, uh, field here where you can write anything, maybe you have set fields, right, um, for certain questions. And so instead of just having the bot, like map data to new fields, and you have automations connected to those uh, fields and stuff like that, you can basically use this to now format it correctly and make sure it's mapped in the right uh, uh, category. And an example of that would be if your budget question is multiple choice and you only have five hundred dollars or less or a thousand dollars or uh, or more for a budget hypothetically you could just tell this prompt to please format this data into only one of the following outputs and to match it exactly and then once it's matched exactly you can actually update uh, the custom field for that specific question with uh, the exact output you could just do a condition if the output is 500 or less update the field with that if the uh, budget question is a thousand or more then update the field with a thousand or more so that's a little bit more advanced but you know if you're going to automate your business you got to understand this stuff so hopefully this was valuable for you guys i'm excited about this feature and uh excited to create more solutions for people that are automating their business so if you guys are in the go high level community already or just you know on the software you can join my free community down below um, and hang out with a bunch of other people that are in there if you're new to the software and you're looking at different features and stuff, you can use my uh, trial link and get access to my bonuses and my templates and all the good stuff that I've used to grow and scale my business. And you can access that down below if you'd like. So see you in the next video and talk to you then. Bye-bye.